Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about all the books that I read in the later half of July. So July was an interesting reading month for me. I would say it's probably one of the worst months that I've had quality wise because I didn't like the majority of the books that I read which stinks because I love raving about the books that I love. I don't like talking about books negatively. I don't enjoy it. Um, but I simply did not like the majority of these books or I felt meh about them. Like I didn't really love a lot of them, if that makes sense. So I'm only going to be talking about the books that I've read from July 16th to the 31st. So if you want to know all the books that I read before that point in July, I will leave my mid-month wrap up in the description for you. So let's get started and talk about the books that I read. First is To Sir Philip With Love by Julia Quinn, book number five, I believe, in the Bridgerton series. I'm actually not going to be mentioning like anything about this book in this video. Um, I'm doing a dedicated Bridgerton vlog and all of my thoughts for this book and all the other books will be in said vlog. So I ended up reading The Orcs Empress by Lila Fay next. This is the third book in her Orc trilogy. So all the books in the series follow the same couple. I absolutely adored the first two in the series. It's about a human woman and a orc general falling in love. And this book actually takes place like six or five years after book two. And I was really interested in this one because again, I loved book one and book two. And this one is like a time jump, which I normally don't love, but all of orc kind has disappeared from the land and they're trying to find them and bring them back. And I'm like, okay, that sounds really cool. Um, it sounds like it's gonna be full of adventure and all that stuff. And unfortunately, this did not live up to the expectations that I guess had in my brain. There was just a lot going on in this book and the couple in this wasn't together in the same area in the same land until like 60% of the book. And I just felt like that first 60% was a slog to get through because I'm in a romance book for the romance. And if y'all are apart for like 60% of the book, I need that part of the book to be amazing in other aspects. And I don't feel like it was, unfortunately. It was just way all over the place. And I was bored throughout most of this book. Antagonist and the conflict in here didn't make much sense to me, which is very bizarre because it felt like this book was written by a different author compared to the first two books in the series. But I will hardcore like recommend the first two books. You do not need to read like this book, okay? You can pretend that the two, like the, the series ends at book two and it will be an amazing series for you. Book three is meh for me, so I say skip it. You don't need to read it because it takes place six years after like the happy for now that is book two, so. I was a little sad, so I gave this three stars. There is trigger warning in here. And in this series in general, for death, murder, attempted sexual assault, uh, kidnapping, and mentioning of sexual assault too. I next read an alien romance called Cassette's Haven by A.G. Wild. A.G. Wild is becoming one of my new favorite alien romance authors. I've just been adoring her books. I don't think I've given any of them lower than three stars. Her alien romance is just so Fun. I feel like they're like Ruby Dixon-esque, but add more adventure and more alien culture to them. So Cassette's Haven is the third book in her Ribs Sanctuary series. I believe it's the last book. You can read these books out of order if you would like. They can be read as standalones. However, the side characters in this book you do meet in the previous books in the series. And book two, um, So Hot's Protection is one of my favorite alien romances of all time. So... I say read that one. <laughs> so all the books in the series is a romance between a human woman who's been illegally abducted from Earth and a the specific type of alien species I cannot remember for the life of me. These women end up getting taken from Earth and um, they get put on this planet by like legally as slaves and these the sanctuary kind of like saves them. So Nia is one of the women who who is in this animal sanctuary, um, not as an animal. She's taking care of the animals in the sanctuary. And it's kind of been like a refuge for like three or a couple human women. And Cassit is actually the friend to the alien owner of this sanctuary. And basically Nia gets accidentally kidnapped by these other aliens and Cassit ends up witnessing it and he goes to rescue her. And this is kind of an adventure about him rescuing her from these aliens. But Nia is so kick butt that she actually maybe doesn't need rescuing at all. And Cassit falls more in love with her 
by her showing how strong and amazing and how capable she is. I really enjoyed this one. I gave it four stars. There's a trigger warnings in here for kidnapping, death, murder, attempted sexual assault, previous childhood abandonment, and claustrophobia. Um, tropes, you have alien romance, there's a caretaking scene. Nia has a really bad panic attack because she is claustrophobic and they have to be put into this small space to make sure like the enemy doesn't find them. And so um, Cassie is like caring for her and holding her and like talking to her through her panic attack. There is a damaged hero. There's a language barrier between the two at first. Cassie is kind of like a savior of sorts towards Nia. So the savior trope. And we have a kick butt warrior woman in here. I then have Wicked in His Arms by Stacey Reed, the second book in the Wedded by Scandal series. Now this series has not been my favorite, but I've been sticking through it to get to book, it's either book four or five. Um, where I know that one of the characters has a disability and like I'm trying to read more books with disabled characters um, and so I'm like sticking through the series because I'm a big series marathoner you know however this one was not was not my favorite I honestly don't remember a lot about this book I can't really tell you the summary because I read it a while ago and I don't really remember and if I don't like a book I purposefully will not remember what it's about because why keep that in my brain you know the main thing that I do remember is how much I disliked the hero of this book. I cannot stand historical romances where the hero's dead father is kind of like a weight on their shoulders and is still dictating this man's love life. Um, you've seen it in The Duke and I, and this one is a prime example of that as well. The hero's father was very consistently beating his wife, so the hero's mother. And so the hero has vowed, honestly, to never get married and fall in love with a woman because he thinks that his emotions are too much and he will end up doing the same thing to his wife and the woman he loves. It just really grinded my gears every time a historical hero thinks this way because their father did something horrible to their wife that they're gonna end up doing the same thing just because they share the same blood. You're an entirely different person. That doesn't mean you're gonna be doing the same things and I think some of these heroes are too dumb to realize that. <laughs> this was just not my kind of hero until the end. His grand gesture in here, the groveling grand gesture, was 10 out of 10 would recommend. That's the only saving grace of this book was that gesture scene. And honestly, the three stars, I'm gonna give it three stars. The three stars I'm giving this book is solely for the heroine because I loved her. She's the heroine who goes against society norms and loves to run outside, go swimming and do stereotypical male things. She's like, just because I'm a woman, that doesn't mean that I can't do these things. I'm not gonna sit in a corner and embroider for the rest of my life. Like I'm gonna have adventures and it sucks that society won't let me have adventures simply because I'm a woman. So I loved her. I love those kinds of heroines. Um, for trigger warnings in here, attempted essay, domestic violence, death and murder. Another alien romance that I read at the end of July is Rescued by the Alien Pirate by Celia Kyle and Athena Storm. Um, so this is the first book in her Mates of Kilgari series and I was really excited because all of the books in the series are on any play. And I was like great I can binge and find a new alien romance series that I love. Unfortunately that it is not what happened. Our heroine in here, Varya, has been kidnapped along with many other human women and put on this spaceship and kind of like abandoned on this spaceship and then they get rescued by some alien pirates, the Kilgari. Solaire is the hero of the story and he's kind of like the leader of all the Kilgari on this spaceship. And then he realizes that the spaceship filled with human women may be also filled with their fated mates. Like they're realizing that their fated mates, like all these men, their fated mates are on this ship and they didn't know. There was not much going on in this book, honestly. I was very bored reading it. And I was very hopeful reading this book. I was like, maybe the other books in the series are better and I'll like them more, but I'll talk about the next book in the series a little bit later. I ended up not liking that one either all that much. So I gave this three stars. It was okay like there wasn't anything bad about this book it was just boring there was nothing really going on in it honestly then i have three books that i ended up reading for my indie romance vlog i believe it was the last video that i posted for y'all i'll link it down below if you've never seen it um but i'm just gonna mention them i'm not gonna talk about them i read don't speak by diane lane i also read praise by sarah kate and I read The Entitled by Cassandra Robbins. Those three books are all mentioned in that vlog if you want to go check them out. The next book that I ended up reading is the following third book in the Wedded by Scandal series by Stacey Reed. So How to Marry Marquess is book three. And I remember like nothing about this book and I think that says something. I think it's like a, uh, a pining romance. Evie um, is 
like basically in love with has been pining over her brother's friend um who is Richard for years uh, but Richard has always held himself back from Evie because she is way younger than him she is his friend's sister you know and then they become close friends themselves like evie and richard become very close and he doesn't want to sully her name because of the things that he's gone through he is now a single father to um a bastard daughter and in society that's a big no-no you do not acknowledge your bastard children essentially in society and he does it because he loves his daughter and he thinks that bringing Evie into his life will tarnish her and make her hate him because she loves society and all that stuff, but he might not know Evie as well as he thinks, you know? Um, so I gave this three stars. I honestly don't remember anything else and I don't even remember how I felt about it, honestly. Man, this video is so boring. I am so sorry. <laughs> I then decided to cleanse my palette and pick up a novella one night. It's like 40 pages. It's called Arctic Star by Cassie Mint. I think this was a recommendation from Rachel, from Rachel Reads and Sings. Um, she loves Cassie Mint and I think I heard her talk about this one in a video one time. So Harlow in here is the heroine. She is trying to escape her uncle she, i think her uncle she lives with her uncle i believe she's over 18 18 19 i don't know um anyway she's trying to escape her uncle because her uncle's trying to force her to marry like this old man <laughs> and she's like no i'm not having that and so she runs away and on a bus and goes as far as possible all the way up north into like the snowy mountains i don't know what state they're in or anything like that um but she's kind of like in the middle of nowhere and she thinks she's being chased and she comes across this cabin in the woods which is where our hero lives cole is the hero he is a recluse and the moment that he sees harlow he knows that he has to protect her from whatever is chasing her this is definitely an insta love novella so if insta love is not your thing i don't recommend picking this one up for this one i just felt like there was a few things missing for me like i wanted more out of it i feel like there were a lot of uh unanswered questions too like um, there is a certain character following Harlow that is not the uncle and I wondered like why? Why is this person following her, chasing her down? And then also uh, Harlow actually doesn't speak at all. Like she doesn't speak. She's never been able to speak or something along those lines. And we never got any information about that. And I don't know why Harlow can't speak. I was just wanting more. Like I felt like some things were not explained as much as I would have liked. But for tropes in here, you have it's on Kindle Unlimited. There's a mountain man. Uh, a character who doesn't speak. It's a novella and it is definitely a winter read. I gave this book a 3.5 and 5 stars. I'm trying every month to pick up a historical year that doesn't have an audiobook and that be kind of like my one physical book that I try and read in a month. And I ended up doing it this month. I did it. I picked up for My Lady's Kiss by Linda Needham. I bought this book on my Atlanta booktuber retreat and this is was a first like a cover by because look at this cover but then also the back is basically saying how the woman is trying to find a husband like her brothers are forcing her to marry and the only way she can think to find a husband is to blindfold herself spin in a circle and the first man she touches is the man she's going to marry and that man is lord thomas uh montclair there's more to this story though like i feel like that's not a good like summary of the book like a I don't know like that's not mainly what this book is about so I'm going to talk about what it's about so McKenna in here McKenna Hughes is kind of like the leader of this village or kind of like mother of the village if that makes sense like she ends up taking care of this village and helping them the best she can because she loves the people in this village and everything and the lord of the village was horrible like the previous one was horrible he's the one who killed her father like she hated him he ends up leaving the land and so the beginning of this book is her doing that thing where she blindfolds, her, blindfolds herself and she ends up touching thomas who she's never seen or met before like he does not live in this village she's like who is this man and he's actually the new lord to come and fix up the village and kind of like take it over and mckenna is not happy about this she's like you don't know these people you don't love these people like i do like I am here to take care of them and you cannot come in here and just ruin everything that I've built. And so she schemes and tricks her way to kind of like ruin the progress he's making in this village. However, Thomas has kind of had like a breaking point with her. He doesn't know about her blindfold marriage husband like deal that she's made. Um, so she, he doesn't actually know that McKenna kind of like picked him to marry. Um, she's not gonna follow through with it because she hates this man or claims to hate him. Thomas is kind of like fed up with all of McKenna's scheming. So he ends up kidnapping her and bringing her to the castle that he is staying in. 
and kind of keeping her as his prisoner. So this is definitely an enemies to lovers whirlwind romance that I absolutely adored. Like this was so good. This is one of my favorite captor captive romances and that doesn't even last the whole lot like the whole chunk of the book is not mainly captor captive the kidnapping part in here though like the kidnapping scenes where she is his hostage is honestly one of my favorite parts of this book like it's so stinking good it's like pure gold it is magic so thomas is very fed up with mckenna at the point in at a certain point in this book she's escaped him quite a few times and he is sick of it <laughs> he just wants this woman to stay put so to make sure she does not run away one night he forces her to sleep in the same bed as him there's no funny business going on even though the both of them kind of want there to be funny business but nothing like that happens but he ends up forcing her to sleep in his bed makes her take off all of her clothes because if she runs away like she'll be naked like hopefully she won't want to run away because she doesn't have any clothes she he takes her clothes chucks them out the window in this castle and then forces her to tie her hair in a braid, like put her hair in a braid. And while they're sleeping, he grabs the braid in his fist and like holds it while he is sleeping to make sure she does not run away from him. <laughs> that part of the book, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And then McKenna is just hilarious in here. Like I love her and how strong she is and how much she learns to care for Thomas. This was so good. I love how you slowly got to see these characters be enemies and slowly grow into lovers. Like I fully got to see that on page, which is what I love about romance books. However, this is not a full five star for me, even though I would love for it to be. They were just the scenes at the end was just way too rushed for me and I didn't really care for the conflict whatsoever. Um, and so that's why it's a 4.5. I wish it was a five, it was on the way to a five and then the ending kind of like left the sour taste in my mouth. So it's a 4.5. For trick warnings in here, you have discussion of a miscarriage, uh, familial death, hanging and kidnapping. There is one memorable quote on here I thought I would share. So McKenna asks Thomas, you're a possessive beast, aren't you? And Thomas responds by saying, I, tis best you learned that early. <laughs> um, for tropes, you have captor captive, enemies to lovers, historical romance. It's a historical standalone also. Um, the meet cute moment in here is fantastic. And there is a one bed trope too. One of the books that I did not finish in July is Treasured by the Alien Pirates by Celia Kyle and Athena Storm. So this is the second book in the Mates of Kilgari series that I talked about earlier. This is the second book to that. And I just didn't finish it. I was very bored. I don't remember either of these characters. I don't remember what happened in this, but the series was just boring. Like it's just a bunch of aliens sitting on a spaceship and that's it, honestly. So I didn't feel like finishing it because I really wanted to do my reread of the book that's next coming up. And I was like, why read this book? Why read any more of this if I don't want to? So I didn't finish it. So the next two books and the last two books that I ended up reading in July were both rereads for me. So I'm participating in the SJM along. Um, it's a, uh, read a thon kind of like or read along read along uh put together by jen from the book refuge where we're kind of like reading sjm's books in publication order many of us are rereading them um so i did my reread of a court of thorns and roses um look at this beautiful edition i just have to say it is stunning um my original copy um like my red original copy that matches like this one my friend is borrowing it so um, I'm gonna show up the collector's edition instead. Um, but this obviously is the first book in the Akatar trilogy. It's about Feyre and that's all I'm gonna say because anything I say could be spoilery, but fantasy romance book. I ended up picking up the graphic audios for both of these books and I've never listened to them and it was such an amazing time. If you've never listened to the graphic audio books, you need to, if you don't know what a graphic audio book is, it's basically like a movie in your brain. So um, there's one person kind of like narrating it the whole time, like the fairer voice, and then every time a new character has dialogue, there is a new narrator for that person. So there is only a man speaking for Tamlin, like the entire time he's speaking Tamlin's lines, and then one for Lucian, and one for Alice, and like all different people speaking. And then there's background noise, music, sound effects, like it's really cool. So I enjoyed this reread. I did find myself kind of like slogging through this book and wanting to just get it over with because I never reread book one. I ne I've only read it probably like four times compared to the times that I've reread all the other books because like this one is not everyone's favorite. Like no, <laughs> compared to the other books, no. So I was like slogging my way through this, just wanting to get to book two. But of course I love this series so and then the last book that i ended up reading in july is my reread of a court of mist and fury i listened to the graphic audio it was 
amazing. The graphic audio for this book is stunning. This book is one of my favorite books of all time. I adored it. I think this book is a masterpiece. It is so good. She did so good with this book and I just adored this reread and I can't wait for the Aqua War graphic audio to come out. I think there's three parts to it and part one is already out. And so I'm so excited to get to that one, but this one was really good. I loved it. If you have not read this series yet, you need to because it is just so amazing. Anyways, there you have it. Those are all the books that I ended up reading in the later half of July. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a crown emoji in the comment section down below but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all wake up today's gonna be a good day 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 wake up today's gonna be a good